and we've got ourselves a stats video. This is going to be a stats, just purely stats, purely update video. All the stats on the team, around the league, standings, all that good stuff, all-star break, that type of stuff. This is all going to be just updating you guys on the team. No actual games in this episode. We will resume that in the next episode as we go through the trade deadline in the next episode. Or it might be a Joey Bart prospect profile. Depends on which one I decide to put out first. But as of right now, we are about a week and a half, two weeks away from the All-Star break as we are sitting in the sim right here. And I've noticed that Reyes Maranta is getting absolutely no playing time whatsoever because the game for another year has just has this thing where they don't recognize eight relievers. We're at a point in Major League Baseball in real life where more and more teams are starting to carry one less bench player and one more reliever so they can have more of these insane relievers that dominate the game today. That's what the Giants were doing with their bullpen. That's what I do with my bullpens in OTP all the time. But I can't do it in this unless I quick manage every game so I can guarantee who gets minutes, or not minutes, who gets innings pitched and whatnot, and who gets the playing time that I deserve, that I think they deserve. I might end up doing that for the rest of the season or starting next year, but right now I have not been doing that. So Reyes Maranta has just been getting completely neglected by the AI and Sims. So to counter that, we are going to be sending down Ty Block, and we are going to be calling up an extra fielder in Chris Shaw, the guy who was raking in AAA. You guys just saw him in the Minor League Update episode. He is going to be called up as an extra fielder. He'll actually be starting in left field against right-handed pitching, and he'll be wearing number 33 at the big league level. Also, while simming up in this, like, week and a half, two weeks to the All-Star break, a pretty big injury happened. Steven Duggar, our young center fielder, a potential 25-year-old, he tore his Achilles in very late June. Uh, he's out for six-plus months. I'm just hoping that he's not going to retire from that injury, because that is one of those injuries that will trigger the retirement to happen for pretty much any player, no matter how old they are. So, Steven Duggar, hoping he comes back, because he was at least going to be a plan for the future to be a fourth outfielder if he couldn't develop his bat. So, uh, kind of hoping he's not retiring. And because he's hurt, now our outfield is looking even thinner, and our organizational depth is so thin, I didn't really feel like calling up Mac Williamson or Michael Reed. So I decided to go out and make a trade. So we sent Ty Block to the Arizona Diamondbacks for Andrew Applin. Basically a minor leaguer for minor leaguer trade, except they might end up on each team's individual major league roster. Obviously, we just sent, we just sent down Ty Block. He's just a spot starter, long reliever type. He's nothing special, but he is useful in certain situations. And then Andrew Applin, nothing special about him. He's just a 28-year-old C-potential guy. Hasn't played in the big leagues in his career. He's got good vision, good discipline. He can feel. He's got good speed. Not going to be the greatest bat. He's hitting pretty well in AAA. He's got a 7 uh, no, he's slashing 265, 373, 402 in AAA, and 234 at bats. He's going to get called up, and he's going to be playing center field against right-handed pitching for us, while Pilar plays against lefties, and he'll be wearing number 72. Now we get to the real grind of the episode, and that is going through all of our stats. Uh, starting off with some of the bats on our team. The best bat statistically on our team has been Ryan Schimpf. He got called up very early on in the season, and he leads the team in OPS with a 9.05 OPS. A very good year so far for Ryan Schimpf. I'm hoping he can come back next year and either play second or third for us next year. Probably third, because Panic will still be here, so probably a third baseman again next year for us. He also leads the team in home runs with 14. He's even got a 284 average, which I really don't give a shit about average at all. But it's just absolutely wild to see Ryan Schimpf in like his 32 contact with a 284 average. Buster Posey also hitting quite well, as he probably should be, because he is the best overall position player on our team. 844 OPS, he's got a 318 average, that leads the team. And uh, the thing about him, though, is his power is completely gone. He's only got four home runs. He's not a power guy. He never really was too much of a power guy. I think he hit like 20 home runs once in his career, and other times it was just like mid-teens, high-teens. But, I mean, it looks like he, he could possibly not even get to 10 home runs this year if he continues to hit at this pace. So, not not what you want to see from the power numbers, but he is still getting on base. He's still hitting a lot of doubles, so I guess you can't complain too much. 
Brandon Bell also with a above 800 OPS at 810. He's got 10 home runs. He's getting the job done as our first baseman and corner outfielder in situations. Tyler Austin, a 767 OPS. Not too shabby. He's got nine home runs. He only plays against left-handed pitching. And he also does not get on base enough, so he needs to improve that to really up his value as a player because he's just not getting on base enough, simply as that. Brandon Crawford has actually been quite a surprise offensively for us this season. He's got a 786 OPS. Is that right? What the fuck? Of course you expect him to be one of the best offensive shortstops in the league, out there scooping up everything, making insane plays. But especially in real life, he's not exactly uh, a hitter anymore. He's got decent ratings still in this, and that's good because he's being able to... He's, he's been hitting well for us. He's slashing 283, 350, 436, 786, like I said, 786 OPS, like I said. He's got 10 home runs. He even leads our team in RBI with 10. So, Brennan Crawford, if he can keep up production like that throughout the rest of his contract, then it's not that bad of a contract to have. Joe Panic having a pretty Joe Panic like year. He's not the biggest power guy. He's got seven home runs, but his slugging percentage isn't that high. He's got a 757 OPS. And if you look at his average, 292, old school guys would look at that and say, oh, he's having a pretty good year. 292 average, 354 OBP, but the OPS, like I said, not the highest. Uh, you would like an 800 OPS, ideally, but he's not doing that. But I will take a 757, especially since I believe last year he had, like, a very bad year, and even the year before he had a very bad year, I'm pretty sure. All I know is that Joe Panic, as of recently, has not had the best uh, seasons of his career. And hopefully he can continue having a decent year and build on to that into next season because he is going to be on the last year of his arbitration next year. So if he has a good year, we can trade him at the deadline and then have somebody else play second base for us. Now, Steven Duggar, the guy who just tore his Achilles, he's a guy who hits for a decent average. He was not walking enough. He had no pop at all. As it stands right now, he's basically a defensive guy. He's just a defensive-minded player. Uh, I would hope his bat does develop more throughout the future, but I still really hope he doesn't retire because, like I said, even as a fourth outfielder in the future, he was still a part of our plans. Gerardo Parra, our current right fielder, he got off to that pretty hot start to the year, but I believe like the past month or so, he's really struggled. He has a 710 OPS now, which is not what you like to see. Uh, it doesn't matter what his OPS is at the deadline, though. He's going to be traded no matter what. It's just a matter of what his value will be at the deadline, so maybe we're going to have to package him with one of our relievers so we can trade him off. But he is for sure going to be gone at the deadline. Evan Longoria, my favorite contract on this team. Oh man, the, the $15 million pinch hitter this year, I believe he's up to like $18 million next year, and then he's up to like $20 million after that. And then I believe after that his contract is over, and it's just, I mean, he, he's he got a sub-400 slugging percentage, even though he's got 10 home runs, and his OPS is like 702. Like, it's just barely not 600s, and it's just, it's not what you want from a guy who used to be one of the best third basemen in baseball. Uh, he's old, he's washed up, I don't know what else you want me to say about him. Uh, hopefully he can continue being a pinch hitter, I guess, and just playing in situations, but I don't think he's going to be long-term, even the... Right now, he's the starting third baseman against lefties. Ryan Schimpf might take over that spot both sides of the plate, or both... against both sides of uh, pitching, righties, and lefties, if Longoria continues to hit like this, and he'll just be a, a pure bench piece. And then of the guys who just recently got called up, Andrew Applin, only 43 ABs. I'm not really going to go too much into his stats because they don't really matter anyways, and plus he's only got 43 ABs, very small sample size. Same thing for Chris Shaw, only 49 at-bats, very small sample size. Aramis Garcia, our backup catcher, 83 at-bats, not the smallest of sample size, still decent, I guess. It's just hilarious to see a 430 OPS. I mean, what? That is insane. And now moving on to the pitching side of things for the Giants. Bumgarner leads our team in war with a 2.8. He's pitched in a 111 innings. He's got a 3.24 ERA and a 2.09 FIP. He is having a pretty damn good year, and that's what you like to see because he is going to be traded at the deadline, so he should be able to pot us a decent return at that deadline. Derek Rodriguez, D-Rod. I have no idea if they actually call him D-Rod, but I'm going to call him D-Rod because his name is Rodriguez, and that's what everybody whose name is Rodriguez gets called, their initial and Rod. 
He has pitched 120 innings for us. That's the most on the team. He's got a 2.32 ERA. That's the best out of our starters. But he does have a 402 FIP. Now, that's not the it's not the worst FIP. It's not a bad FIP by any means. It's just that he's getting pretty lucky, and that's why his ERA is so low. And, I mean, hey, I guess we'll continue to get lucky with him if we can. But, I mean, if his ERA does go up a bit, that's probably why he's going to be... It's going to be catching up to him. And then Jeff Samarja, the Shark, is actually having a pretty good year for us. 107 innings pitched, a 2.93 ERA, 3.57 FIP. Uh, hopefully he can be serviceable next year as well, because that'll be the last year of his contract. And who knows, maybe next year somebody will actually be desperate for a starter at the deadline, and we'll be able to trade him off. But as of right now, he is uh, he's having a pretty good year for us. So maybe next year he'll be able to fill in that fifth starter role, and uh, actually fulfill out the last year of his contract. Now onto the bullpen, where pretty much all of our bullpen is having a pretty good year. Uh, Will Smith having a very good year as our closer. 45 strikeouts and 35 and two-thirds innings pitched. A 177 ERA, 101 whip, a 2.89 FIP. And he's on the last year of his deal, so he should get us a pretty, pretty, pretty good return at the trade deadline. Uh, that is definitely what I'm anticipating to get from Will Smith, because he is, he is the best overall player on our team. And uh, he's pitching very well, and there are a lot of teams out there, especially even playoff teams, who uh, could definitely use a reliever of his caliber. Trevor Gott, one of the two relievers on the team currently who was going to be with us for a long term because we still have him under team control for quite a while. He's having a good year, a 3.39.1 innings pitched, a 2.75 ERA, and a 2.97 FIP. Sam Dyson, he's another guy with a, dece a deceiving ERA based on his FIP. He will be traded at the deadline. He also has one year of arbitration left after this year. So that adds to his value as well because he'll have the rest of this year. And then also they'll have him through arbitration next year if they do decide to do that. Nick Vincent also having a decent year. He is also trade bait. Mark Melanson, he's also having a decent year, I guess. He will probably be the closer once Smith is traded. He has this year and I believe one more year on his contract. And then we are done with Mark Melanson. And then Reyes Maranza is the other guy who we have under team control for quite a while. Him and Gott are the only long-term relievers on our roster currently. And he's also, of course, going to be getting way more innings pitched in the second half of the season. Tony Watson, lefty, not having the greatest year. He had a good year last year for us. Not having the greatest year this year, but he is still going to be trade bait at the deadline nonetheless. Now let's move on to take a look around the league at the league leaders in the National League in batting average. Buster Posey is actually tied for second, uh, tied with Kettle Marte of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Anthony Rendon of the Nationals is actually first by a very, very small margin. OBP, Posey is also among the leaders there. He is in seventh. On the pitching side of things, Derek Rodriguez is third in ERA. He is fourth in innings pitched, and he is sixth in whip. As far as the home run leaders in the National League go, Ronald Acuna is at 25. He is tied with Young Ho Kong of the or Young Ho Gong of the Pirates at 25. Uh, Jesus Aguilar is 23. Bryce Harper is 21. Josh Donaldson also 21. And then Wilmer Flores with 20 home runs, having a very good year for the D-backs. And now at the war in the National League, pitcher war, Strasburg leads that category. Madison Bumgarner is on that list at fifth. And then the batter war, top three guys, Young Ho Gong, Yasmani Grandal, and Ronald Acuna. Taking a look at the American League, their batting average leader is a catcher in Nomar Omar Narvaez, the Seattle Mariners catcher with a 382 batting average. What? That is insane. This guy is just going out there getting hits every goddamn day. I mean, holy. And then he's also leading an OBP with a 449 OBP. He's leading an OBP in the same league that Mike Trout plays in. That is insane. But then, of course, in home runs, Trout has a very large lead on that. He's got 33 at the All-Star break, and then Daniel Palka from the White Sox has 23. Leading in the war of the batters in the, in the American League, of course, that is Mike Trout. And then the pitcher war, Chris Sale, that's pretty predictable. But in second place, Charlie Morton, obviously a good pitcher, but I mean, second best war in the American League, that's pretty surprising. So he's having a damn good year with the Rays. And then Marco Gonzalez from the Mariners having a pretty good year as well. He's up there in that leaders as well. Now moving on to the All-Star teams, the National League team just scrolling by as I talk about this. 
Uh, we only had two All-Stars. Buster Posey was the third catcher, and then Will Smith was the fourth closer. Derek Rodriguez completely snubbed, despite being all over the pitching league leaders. Mad Bum probably also should have made it, but he doesn't have enough wins for the game's old man ways. I mean, come on. The future is now, old man. And then the AL All-Star team, of course, Omar Narvaez made it as the catcher, but he was not the starting catcher. How is that guy not the starting catcher? He's leading the league in average by a goddamn mile. Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. And he's somehow not the starting catcher. Wellington Castillo gets it over him, so what's that about? And then the Orioles' only All-Star was their shortstop, Richie Martin, with his 236 batting average. I don't, I don't know what that's about. They don't have anybody on their roster. They don't have a pitcher who could have made it over him. And then also very surprising in the American League, Aaron Judge did not make the team. That would never happen in real life because MLB would not allow that marketing to uh, not happen. Although they are pretty bad at marketing, so maybe they would. Maybe they would allow that to happen. But then again, it's fan vote, so he would get voted in anyways. Man, I guess the fan vote in this is actually more uh, accurate to performance than it is in, uh, in real life. Who would have thought? Maybe not, though, because D-Rod got snubbed and Narvaez didn't actually make... I don't know. Who really cares? Anyways, let's move on to the standings throughout the league in the National League. The East, the Washington Nationals are leading that division. Phillies 10 and a half games back in second place. The NL Central is a very tight one. Brewers in first. Reds only a, ha a one and a half games out. Pirates only three games out. Cubs are only three and a half games out. And even the Cardinals are still in it. They're nine games out. But I mean, hey, they have a good second half. They're right in the thick of things in the NL Central. In the NL West, Rockies are in first place. Dodgers only a game and a half out. We're only five and a half games out because my team's been pretty much mediocre throughout the season. We're not in the playoff picture right now, but we're like five and a half games out in the NL West and like four and a half games out in the wild card, I think. And uh, that's not going to hold up once the entire team gets purged at the deadline. So don't expect us to do anything in the playoffs because we're not making that. And taking a look at the American League in the East, of course, is led by the New York Yankees because they are a cheat code in this game. Red Sox having a great year, too, but they're 11 and a half games out because, like I said, the Yankees are just a goddamn cheat code. AL Central, hide your, hide your shock here. Don't, don't get too bent out of shape over how, how insane this is. The Cleveland Indians are leading the division. Oh, my God, I, I can't believe it. I've never seen that before. And then the White Sox, they're eight and a half games out. They still have hope. But, I mean, they would have to have a pretty good second half to uh, win the AL Central. AL West, the Astros are in first. Angels, eight and a half games back. They're actually the second wild card team. The A's are still right in the thick of things for the wild card. And so are the Mariners. The AL West is actually pretty damn deep when it comes to a playoff spot. And with that being said, that's going to wrap things up here for this All-Star Break update video. We have gone over all the stats on our team, some of the around the league stuff, the standings. It's all been covered here in this update video. So with that being said, I've been your host, Jerseyborn, a.k.a. the King of Boston, and I am saying, the Padres should just wear their brown unis full-time. What are you waiting for?